Hey guys, this is part three of my third Scrabble strategy tutorial. If you haven't seen the first two parts, you should go watch those now or this won't make too much sense. If you have, uh, we're soon going to get back into examples. Uh, just a few more things to discuss. There's one large problem with tile evaluation, and that is that they are static. They don't change depending on the layout of the board, what kinds of tiles are still left in the bag, or what the score is. It's just not that sophisticated. Rather, it is an average of millions of games with vastly different results. It is your job to think critically. Quackle also has another feature called simulation. Simulation works different from the tile valuations, and where tile valuations comes from millions of other games, simulation only comes from the game that you are playing now. How it works is that it takes the game you're playing and simulates it through to the end, depending on many different plays that you could make. And what it does is it gives you a estimation of your next rounds play based on your current rounds play. Our previous example where no vowels had yet been put on the board, this means that there are a lot of values in the bag, you're more able to draw vowels from the bag, and this makes consonants more valuable than vowels. Have the word eluders starting in row B. The tile D is now going to be much more important since it can be hooked for deluders. The tile valuation doesn't take this into account. Simulations do, and so should you. This is the most technical that my videos will get, but you have to remember that this is the most crucial step in understanding Scrabble strategy. It takes a lot of experience to know what the tiles on your rack are worth and how they interact with each other. The leave relies heavily on tile valuation. However, you have to consider that in almost all of the examples I've given, leave has not been the only thing that we are considering. Synergies will always be the same, regardless of what is on the board. For example, if there are no bingo lanes, M and K are better to keep for high points and low tile turnover on a closed board. Also, thinking back to this example, keeping the three consonants is made much less dangerous by having the two vowels built into virgin territory with the E of Eclipse and the A of Aorta. In this rack, we're on the third turn, where MIX or XU would close all open vowels. Leaving one vowel in your hand may actually be the better play. The leave with all these extras taken into consideration will be discussed in a later episode. Now, as requested, a whole boatload of examples. First, an easy test. Pause and separate these 10 pairs into positive and negative synergies, not valuations. Now here's the same thing, but harder. Let's look at this opening rack, G-I-N-D-O-R-R. -R. Now there's a smattering of 14-point plays, a few 16-point plays, and three 18-point plays, these being doing, dingo, and grind. Now with doing or dingo, you leave yourself two R's in your leave. We know that having that double there uh, is not a good leave, so if anything, we're going to look at grind. This leaves O-R, which is generally a pretty good leave, because you do have one vowel and one consonant. However, that is not your best play. What is your best play is actually the three-letter word rod. Now this gives you 10 points less than grind, but if you look at the leave, you have R-I-N-G. That I-N-G is crucial, as this early in the game, you're going to be prone to many bingos, and having that I-N-G for a novice is the best thing you can do to your bingo hand. Let's look at this board. We have E, D, G, S, T, U, U. This is an interesting board full of parallel plays and has many inflexible openings. Of the three plays worth more than 20 points, guessed at 25 points, leaves D, U, U and is therefore out of the question. Goods at 20 points leaves T, U and gives a balanced leave but at the sacrifice of other good bingo tiles. D, Gust at 26 points leaves the U which is definitely not the best tile to leave yourself with, and you also must get rid of useful bingo tiles such as the S. Considering there are multiple S bingo lanes on the board, catering towards canister tiles would be a smart play. By playing Vug for 7 points, we sacrifice 19 points, but give a very high probability of a bingo. A few moves later, after Vug led to Sutured, we are presented with a very nice parallel play of Secure for 43 points but we also lose the tiles ERS in the process. 
by just playing Eku in the same position for 26 points, 17 less than secure, we leave ourselves with EIRS, with the open bingo lane ending in the S hooking on pan for span, keeping an S with other canister tiles is definitely the best bet here. Further on in the same game, let's look at a third choice. There's absolutely no way we can justify dumping our blank since there's nothing worth more than 40 points. Zonal, at 42 points, looks nice, but leaves us with the double I. The only other play above 20 while retaining the blank is Ritz for 29 points, which has a much nicer leave of ION in the blank. In this situation, it is not worth 13 points to avoid the duplicate and Zonal rates 6 points higher than Ritz. This is probably the most common explanation of tile worth. The Q on our rack is such a parasitic tile that we want to get rid of it as soon as possible. Without the U to back it up, there's only one place that it can be played, with key in column O. The resulting rack is well balanced and has synergistic tiles. There are no other plays worth more than 25 points that would excuse holding the Q in this turn. With an opening rack of AFIL RRR, the obvious play is flare or frail, leaving RR. However, the equally good Friar avoids the duplicate and simulates 4 points higher. Here, the most points are gained from playing Zetas for 46 points leaving IR down column L, but the best play is indeed Zaw with the same caw hook for 18 points less because of the bingo friendly EIRST leave. To steal an example from Joel Wapnick's book, which is awesome as well as Canadian, let's look at this rack. Would you exchange one letter when you have the ability to play for 46 points? With the rack of A-E-I-R-S-T-U, or Satire plus U, you can't bingo, but you can play re-spaced for 46 points. However, the leave of Satire is so unbelievably useful that exchanging the U, since it is unplayable, is valued higher than taking the 46 points and leave A-I-T-U. The remaining unseen letters give a 77% chance that exchanging one tile will result in a bingo, most of which would be playable. Another book that I've used in my early years is Joe Edley's book. Now this is probably the most common strategy guide when it comes to Scrabble. It's a bit older, uh, so it doesn't have a lot of the discussion on valuation like, uh, like Joel Wapnick's book does with Quackle, um, but it does still include a lot of useful examples. Now the one I want to take from this book is actually one that was also featured in Stephen Fatsis' book, Word Freak, which is a cool read about his rise to power in, in the Scrabble Kingdom. Um, but let's get to the example. What we have here is an opening rack of A-A-A-D-E-R-W. Now, a ward, weird, and aware are all good plays, and this was the conventional wisdom even among the Scrabble experts of the 80s. However, with the introduction of the Maven algorithm, it was clear that the best play was the underscoring AWA, A-W-A, for the superior A-D-E-R leave, better than the A-E, A-A, or A-D leave. So that is tile valuation. Now the best thing you can do to gain a better appreciation and understanding of tile valuation is to cheat. No, not against your friends on Facebook Scrabble or ISC. Get Quackle, play against a robot, Try and do your best, but for every move, find out what your best moves are. You'll be able to see what they are, how much they're worth, and this will give you a much better understanding of actually how to play the game, taking into consideration your leave and tile valuation. Till next time, thanks for watching. Keep leaving comments, and I'll try and get another one faster than I got this one out.